Welcome back. This week, the news about global migration just keeps coming in the United States. The issue has moved to the courts now, two legal challenges uh, against Donald Trump in Europe. It'll be addressed at Thursday's summit in Brussels. While politicians look for a solution, an online platform has been looking back at migration trends over the past 15 years. Earth Time Lapse creates a visual snapshot of how migrant flows have evolved all over the world. Here's one of the developers, Robert uh, Mugger, to explain. What we have here is data showing every single refugee that's moved since the 1990s. 90% of them are living in the underdeveloped world. There is this sense in the West that somehow they're being flooded or inundated by refugees. Well, the fact is that when you look at a visualization of this, you see that the vast majority of people are moving really next, next door to cities in, in neighboring countries. If you layer on top of this map terrorism, events, as well as conflict-related violence, what you'll see is the vast majority of refugees are fleeing from terrorism and conflict, and they're not bringing it. What maps like this can do is help us challenge some of those myths that are out there that are propagated and repeated in some of our media outlets. Well, let's uh, catch up uh, with Robert again now. Uh, he is one of the developers, uh, as we were saying, about the uh, uh, and the co-founder of the think tank, Instituto Igarape. Uh, he joins me from Rio de Janeiro. It is fascinating. I mean, the images are I I very striking, aren't they? And dispel, as you were just saying there, a lot of the myths that the media and people pick up on. Yeah, the images are quite extraordinary. And, and I think it's important that uh, while they are mesmerizing, almost hypnotic, uh, that we not forget that behind each of those dots, which represents 17 refugees per dot, uh, is a story of persecution, uh, a story of survival, and a story of coping. Um, but I think it does bring home the message to people in a really intuitive uh, and immediate way, just the gravity of the challenge, but also the way it's distributed around the world. Well, well let's just look at some of those um, migrations uh, in a bit more detail. Let, let's look at 2015 and the migrations, for example, from Syria uh, and where people went and indeed returned to, because the, the numbers aren't quite as, all the images aren't as, all the numbers aren't as striking as the images appear. Right. Well, I mean, of course, 2015 was, was what many describe now as the European crisis of refugees, where you had uh, millions of Syrians who were forced to flee as a result of uh, attacks by President Assad and, uh, and violence in, in, in major cities. It's important to recall that even before 2015, there was an explosion of internal displacement in Syria. It didn't reach the global headlines as a result of a major drought that resulted in people fleeing land that had become arid. I mean, more than 85% of the livestock failed, 75% uh, of the agriculture. But I think the key point about the Syrian crisis is that while you had 1.5 million people roughly moving towards Europe, primarily towards Germany and Sweden, um, the vast majority, were five to six million refugees were moving next door to countries like Jordan, to Turkey, uh, and, and, and Lebanon. And so I think it's important that while we reflect on the impact of this refugee crisis in Europe, that in fact it's middle income and lower income countries in the south that are carrying the disproportionate burden. Yeah, and when you, when you look at, for example, violence and crime, uh, you can chart all these things, can't you? And in terms of climate change, that is what's so fascinating about it. Yeah, the map is an extraordinary uh, exercise. It was really developed by Carnegie Mellon University's Create Lab, which is a group of AI and robotics engineers, together with a, a large group of research institutes around the world, including my own, the Gahapa Institute and SecDev group. Uh, and, and what we've done is we've taken a array of satellite data um, going back 30 years that we've stitched together. And then on top of that, we've superimposed climate data and socioeconomic information to show all manner of trends from terrorism and conflict violence through to rising sea levels and impacts of forest fires and industrial fires. And I think what really makes this map exciting is that it allows people to locate themselves okay. in it. Robert, do you know, I'm, we're out of time. I wish we had many moments to talk to you. All I will say is that there is more on this on the BBC website at bbc.com forward slash news. Robert Maga, thank you very much. We're finished. Bye-bye.